All right, guys, today we are going to be taking a look and talking about some knives that I think would make really good either military duty or survival knives. And for the kind of background for these knives that I'm choosing, I tried to blend a good amount of functionality and practicality, like wilderness abilities and uh, functionality uh, as far as survival tasks and the ability to complete them, as well as trying to incorporate some more tactical elements. So a lot of these knives, um, not all of them are particularly tactical, but a lot of them are tactical leaning, such as this uh, Perrin Street Buoy by Spyderco. <laughs> Um, so that was kind of the, the drive behind it is to create or create a list of knives that I have that I like and uh, that I think blend tactical and practical quite well. So without any further ado guys, as always, please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, check out the Patreon and Instagram. It all helps a ton. All right, let's jump into it. All right, so as per usual with the list, we are going to be talking about smallest and working our way up. Now the smallest is probably going to be the least tactical, but maybe the most practical. Another thing I wanted to try to do with this list when possible is incorporate real military knives into the list. So the farmer or the Victorinox or Swiss Army knife farmer is the first up on the list for that reason. This is a go-to knife for New Zealand's military. And once again, while it does not scream tactical, unlike maybe the next knife on the list, um, the farmer is incredibly practical and very useful. It is a real no frills multi-tool that is very, like I said, very useful and very, very useful and pretty darn solid. Maybe not quite solid in the way of like batoning, but there's not a lot to go wrong with a simple slip joint multi-tool or blade. Of course, you do have a nice saw on it as well. And uh, this one is one of my personal favorite blades or multi-tools for bushcrafting. So I thought I would throw it on here because it is a very practical blade and very realistic. So uh, the Swiss Army knife or Victorinox Farmer is the first one up on the list. Okay, as I just teased, the next one is a bit more tactical, and that is the Microtech Ultratech. Now, this one is on the more practical end of the spectrum because this is just a single edge, um, very plain, no frills Ultratech. And moreover, this one I took to my Wicked Edge and set it back to, I want to say 16 degrees. I set it back pretty far because the uh, factory edge I think is like 25 plus per side degree. So <clears throat> I made mine a fair bit slicier and it really is very slicey. I actually love the fact that I set it back that far because it just slices like a boss now. But anyways, that aside, um, the Microtech Ultratech is, I think, a really good addition to the list because it is a pretty small pocket knife that is easy to throw in your pocket, kind of forget about it, uh, or even throw it on LBE. And uh, it's still incredibly tough. Uh, if you guys haven't seen already the videos that I have batoning this knife through everything, striking the, the spine on ferro rods to start fires, this is actually one of the smallest knives that I've really put through the ringer for survival kind of testing, and that has been quite successful. So while I wouldn't necessarily say this is the only knife you should choose for survival, you know, I would certainly recommend larger knives for survival, but uh, the Ultratech is certainly one that is pretty darn good. So that is the Microtech Ultratech. Okay, next up on the list, and yet another auto, is going to be the Benchmade 2750 Auto Adamus. Now, the reason why I did not include the smaller Adamus on this list is strictly because of the locks on the both the small Adamus, the 273, and the big boy, the uh, full-size Adamus, the 275 and 2750. The axis locks on these newer Gen 2 Adamuses, they just have a bad habit of slipping. And so on the smaller Adamus, there's really no way to prevent that. And so the reason why this Auto Adamus is on the list is because, hopefully you guys can see here, you can put down the lock, uh, this manual lock, 
into the kind of axis lock mechanism and prevent it from accidentally disengaging on you. So if you do want to hard use your auto Adamus, you do have the ability to lock the axis lock in place to the point where it cannot disengage on you regardless. So this one is a fair bit tougher in that regard. However, I will note too, this one, if you do not lock the axis lock, can the access lock can slip back. And like I've noted in other videos, I think the real problem is that it does not take much movement back for the access lock to disengage. It only takes about a quarter travel before the access lock disengages. So that's, I think, the primary reason why the lockup on these guys is a little bit questionable. But once again, um, you know, for general light duty tasks, you can just deploy it, it will lock just fine. And then if you need to go with hard duty tasks, just kick on that uh, lock and it should be just fine. So that is the second one up. I do still love this uh, Auto Adamus. It fires very hard and uh, it is a pretty tanky blade. So very handy for folders. Okay, that basically sums up folders. And as you'd expect, there's not too many folders that are going to really be able to handle a lot of the survival or wilderness aspects. So now let's talk about some fixed blades. Okay, next one up on the list. And once again, another real world survival knife used by the Swedish military is going to be the Falkneven F1. Now the Falkneven F1 is a little bit small for my tastes, but it is still a mighty robust blade for its size. And because it is on the smaller side, it is a lot more practical to carry for some people. Um, the little F1 is really comfortable really temperature neutral and of course it is made out of a thick beefy stock of laminated vg10 which makes it not only quite rust resistant and, and overall just a really solid knife for a multitude of environments and once again too even though it has a very small very delicate tip don't let that fool you it is still a very robust knife this is another one similar to the uh, microtech ultratech that i wasn't really sure about how well it would fare until I put it through some tests, put it through its paces, and it definitely came out on top. So really fantastic knife, do really enjoy using this one. It would be probably a little small for me in my opinion. It does have real world use and it is real world tough. Okay, next one up on the list, one that you guys probably were not expecting and probably the least tactical of the lineup is going to be the good old venerable Mora Bushcraft Black. Now for me, I still think that this knife actually looks pretty tactical, especially if say you pair it up against a, you know, SE4. You know, this SE4 looks a little bit more tactical maybe with this uh, G10 handle, but as far as it goes, you know, this knife doesn't look too untactical, but aside from that, it is really just a practical, very utility blade and its performance on the channel has been nothing but excellent and of course Mora is very well known and regarded for their blades being performers, durable, robust, and capable of a plethora of different tasks. So the Bushcraft Black is the next up on the list and while it may not be the most tactical it still does have a pretty sharp pretty serious clip point that you could use in a self-defense situation if you needed it. Okay, last on the small knife wagon is going to be the SC4. And the SC4 had to make the list, of course, because this one is not necessarily officially adopted by any military, you know, department per se, but it is widely used throughout the US military and very well regarded and loved by those who use it. The SC4 is a pretty tanky uh, blade, not quite as thick as the F1, but certainly thicker than the Bushcraft Black and anything else we've come up with so far. So not the thickest on the list, but still a thick, robust, heavy duty knife. And it is made out of differentially heat treated 1095. So it is very durable. And uh, I have put the SC3, the smaller brother to this little guy, through the ringer and tried to break it. And it absolutely would not go. So very durable knife, very capable, and overall an excellent choice. Especially with the wide plethora of different handle options. As you can see, this one kind of has a bit of a camo scheme to it and uh, definitely very fitting of the topic that we are covering. 
Okay, stepping it up into some bigger, but actually I believe these are some of the most budget, aside from the Mora and maybe the uh, Victorinox, these are gonna be the most budget offerings on the lineup. So the first one, of course, is going to be the mighty venerable Cold Steel SRK, the full-sized version. And I think if you're going for a survival slash duty blade, the full-size SRK is probably gonna be what best suits you. It's a little bit thicker than the Cold Steel uh, SRK compact and it's a little bit bigger of course but I think that that bigger uh, just overall more comfortable handle really makes up for it and you do have a more capable blade for doing general purpose utility tasks and wilderness uh, self-reliance tasks with this guy overall for a blade that's under $80 I think under 70 still uh, it's very hard to go wrong with a cold steel SRK this one's an SK5 you can also get them in standby for a little bit more uh, price or for a little bit more cost but still either way you get either way you slice it is still a very very good blade okay the next one we're going to go with goes a little bit more towards the tactical line and a little bit less towards the practical so like i said we've been talking about a lot of very practical wilderness blades the next one is the uh, Spyderco Fred Perrin Street Bowie. Now this is the larger version of the Street Beat, or I believe the Street Beat is the smaller version of this blade, because I think the Street Bowie was around before the Street Beat. But uh, these, both the Street Beat and the Street Bowie were designed as kind of urban or almost suburban um, fighting knives that you could reasonably easily conceal on your body and I don't really know how well you could conceal the full street buoy but you could certainly uh, put this on LBE or tactical equipment or just attach it to yourself and have a really great tactical fighting knife if you need it. Now the nice thing that I like about the street buoy is that it's primary purpose is for fighting but it is still an incredibly practical blade especially mine came a little bit not with necessarily a dull edge but with a bit of a short bevel and kind of a high bevel so I took it back to I think 17 or 18 degrees per side and made it a little bit more slicey so mine is a little bit on the slicier side than out of box but it is still a very uh, capable blade for doing a wide variety of wilderness tasks and I have put on this one just a little bit it is a newer edition but this one is holding up just fine it is not a proper full tang but it is a three-quarter tang similar to the cold steel SRK and uh, also similar to the cold steel SRK it is a plastic handle with a bit of rubber in the middle for added traction so uh, overall this is a really well-rounded knife it like i said it does lean more towards the fighting side but it is certainly capable of doing utility tasks and is overall just a really fantastic blade um, and i think what really makes this one stand out is its weight it is around six ounces whereas the rest of these knives are all reasonably heavy duty you know they're pushing eight plus ounces so this one definitely for its size you know it is a little bit smaller than something like the cold seal srk you know it is a few inches shorter than it but it is also very light very thin very agile but being made out of vg10 it is still pretty tough for what it is and of course being made out of vg10 it is stainless steel so it's also gonna be a little bit more weather resistant so that is the fred perrin spider co fred perrin street buoy okay these next two I, it does occur to me i've lost a bit of semblance of size going for the srk then the street buoy but these next two are basically the same size and this is going to be the first one the falkneven a1 now the falkneven a1 i think is the next step up if you're looking for a heavy duty beefy blade that is just going to be on the larger end of the spectrum this is larger than the srk much larger than the street buoy and much larger than just about any of the other knives we've mentioned so far and uh, realistically this is starting to i think push the upper limits of a good duty knife because it's going to be pretty unreasonable or hefty to carry especially when you look at that really thick near quarter inch thick piece of laminated vg10 but it is still very capable for wilderness uh, so 
self-reliance. And of course, being the fact it does have a nice swedge, it will still be able to pierce pretty well if you do need to push it into a tactical role. I would say the biggest disadvantage of this in a tactical or fighting role is that this blade is very wide, very thin very thick and uh, very hefty to kind of move around. That's why I think the, uh, the street buoy is a lot better for that regard of kind of tactical. This blade is far more lighter and more agile. So if you did need to use it in a tactical role, it's gonna be far easier to maneuver in a quick manner. Whereas the uh, A1 is just big and beefy, but the nice thing about the A1 is you can chop with it, you can easily baton with it, it's not going to break, and it is going to hold together very well. In addition to that, too, being VG10, uh, a laminated VG10, it is also very rust resistant, so it is going to be a pretty good temperature and climate neutral blade that is not really going to rust up on you. And of course, like I said, the rubber handle is going to make it temperature neutral. Okay, last, but certainly not least, and I'm sure pretty much everyone had to see it coming, is going to be the CRK Pacific. Now the CRK Pacific was designed by Bill Harsey as a military knife. It is a kind of, I don't wanna say necessarily update, but a sibling to the, the uh, venerable Green Beret. And uh, I think the Pacific's a little bit better than the Green Beret, but both are pretty fantastic for being soldier knives and for being able to be a kind of multi-role duty slash fighting knife. This is definitely very set up for it. And because it isn't quite as thick or quite as hefty as the A1, it is a little bit more maneuverable. Now, of course, this one is by far the most expensive on the list. These go for, I think about 350 from CRK, but aftermarket or resale is usually about $500 on them. So they are not super cheap, but they are very great. But they are very good at what they do and they, what they do, they do very well. So that's why this is my go-to survival knife and uh, why it has all of this survival setup on it because this is, like I said, my go-to survival and general utility blade. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed taking this look at a bunch of awesome knives that I think would make really great duty slash wilderness survival blades if you find yourself in that uh, kind of need. And overall, I think they're all pretty nice, pretty fun, and if nothing else, hopefully this list helped you guys out. As always, God bless, and I'm out.